Welcome to Rising Woman Leaders, a safe space for women to thrive in community where their voices and stories are heard. We're a sisterhood supporting each other to live our dreams and embody the sacred feminine to restore balance on our planet. Join us each week as we return to the unconditional love and guidance of our heart and our womb. I'm your host, Meredith Rom, and I invite you to walk this path of beauty, devotion, and service with us. here today with Shona Keeley Rose. She is a Rose Empress, a womb oracle, and founder of the Rose Lineage Mystery School. And I feel like we've been um, just kind of like seeing each other from afar on the Instagram world. And I've really been looking forward to this time to connect with you. I feel like the wisdom that you hold and that you share is really needed, especially at this time. And I guess where I'd love to start is just asking about your connection with the womb. And I know a lot of your work is related to those mysteries and the blood mysteries and that um, there is a period of time you're sharing a lot of just like, you know, working with our blood. And I wonder just like what was your connection with your womb and how did you get to that place and i know there are a lot of women who struggle with that connection and i wonder just your journey from the womb connection ah oh, thank you so much <laughs> firstly for having me on here i am super honored it feels like yeah it feels like lifetimes in the making i've always truly admired the work that you're offering into the world and really enjoyed the way in which you've been showing up for the sisters so i'm so honored to be here it feels like super amazing privilege and beautiful sacred space and just yeah feeling us together it feels like we've done this before so thank you for holding the space for us and for the sisters to receive what is going to be coming through and um, yeah it's it's interesting that you just mentioned that off the bat because so many women lately have been saying how come you don't speak about the blood mysteries anymore? <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, firstly, I'm pregnant, so I'm not bleeding. Um, but secondly, there's been a really super deep, powerful transformation for me since becoming a mother where I just stepped back and really realized how many of these things that I've been sharing for a long time, which was perfect in the moment, they now feel like so much more, I wouldn't say like I'm protective of them, but I'm just more private with them. And yeah, I feel really deeply connected to the womb teachings, mainly because they are mystery and they, they take us into this vortex of this portal of creation and also death and life. And I feel like in these times, specifically where we are right now, you know, many women that connect to their womb and can connect to that mystery of those transmissions are what this is what we've been preparing for this is why we're here at this precipice and many women who are connected in that way know this we've been preparing for this and if you're someone that has no connection to this it's perfect too because it's never too late and you know being a woman we're so blessed to be a woman in these times you know i i I look around at our brothers right now and you know, have such compassion for them for not having that direct thread to Sophia that we have, you know, within our wombs. And if I could share anything about the womb teachings, I just feel like it's taken me home. You know, it's like the years and years and years of work that I did with my womb before having a baby, I'm so grateful for. But I also feel like that there's no amount of work you can do that makes you feel like you're ready for having a baby. Um, but I just feel like the awareness of that connection and the honoring of that place as being one of the most holiest places in the world is really, that's what's going to save our planet right now. You know, this, the reverence, the devotion, the pausing the stillness, you know, the deep levels of appreciation for, for me, it's, I truly believe that the blood is the Holy Grail, you know, the blood of Christ, the blood of Mary Magdalene our blood you know it's our dna our coding it's what 
connects us to our original point of origin. And for me, it just feels like a path of remembrance. You know, it's like when it, you really can go to those places and love yourself and in all of those places and spaces, it's what takes you home. No one else and nothing else outside of you can do that for you. And so those codings that of that elixir of life, um, actually my favorite connection with the blood right now is uh, with my roses. So I have these 13 rose bushes that I've been stewarding for about, I'd say almost three years now. And the biggest thing that I noticed when I got pregnant is that they stopped blooming. I stopped, I didn't have any blood to offer them. And my partner's daughter just started bleeding like maybe about five cycles ago. And I had a dream that <laughs> she started offering her blood to these roses. And I, I asked her like the next time she was over here and she was actually bleeding. I was like, Geez, how would you feel if we explored uh, offering your blood to the roses? And it was super special because, you know, I had a dream about it and it came into fruition and my rose bushes hadn't been budding for like literally since I got pregnant, so I'm 30 weeks pregnant and they all have buds on them now from offering two weeks ago her moon blood. So for me, what transpired <laughs> with the blood mysteries was this super deep connection with the rose and how I was able to come into the fullest communion with her was through offering my moon blood to these rose bushes. These, well, it's 12 rose bushes and now it's 13. I just got 13th one. And yeah, it's been really special because, I mean, many of us may know this, some of us may not, but when you do offer your blood, whatever you offer your blood to, you create a super deep harmonic relationship with that, whether it be to the earth or to the roses or... Um, the waters, you start having a communion, which is like otherworldly. And I just pray that, you know, women as young as 12 could have that. I would have wanted that. And so obviously with her consent, and I shared a lot with her about these teachings to the degree that I feel like she could receive it. Um, I asked her if she wanted to, and then I, she offered it herself. And it was really special because it's been etched in our bones, you know, from and the ancient times, our ancestors have been doing this. This is the way that they communed, especially through my culture in um, Australia and Aboriginals. And of course, Native Americans, all the cultures, if we trace it back. Um, but yeah, it was really special, you know, to see that happen. So my connection now with the womb feels um, a lot more, yeah, I, I would say um, concealed and private and, it's a lot more of a mystery even to me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the, just the mystery keeps unfolding. Um, and yeah, I'm just in awe of these teachings and how vast and expansive they are, yet how like immaculately like diverse and like s still they are into this like still point. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's just, it's a, it's humbling especially in these times, you know, to come back to these places and spaces with ourselves. I feel really blessed to have had the journey that I've had. Um, but yes, I miss, I miss my, I miss my cycle every, every month. I'm like, Oh, I just want to bleed. Um, being pregnant is so beautiful, but it's, it's funny, you know, like I literally was just sharing with you before. I feel like I'm always on my cycle when I'm pregnant. I like could cry any moment or have these beautiful emotions mm -hmm. and, it's just, it's so, we're so blessed to being women. You know, I always mm -hmm. come back to that. And yeah, just the deepest reverence for just the connection we have to the earth womb. You know, it's like what we're going through right now. It's like we literally are having this, like this complete paradigm purge of what's been created and what's not working. And if you are a woman, you are so blessed. And if you're not, you're blessed too support women in your life to have that connection so that we can really you know create a new consciousness because it happens each month and it happens through the way that we we work with these energies and yeah i just i pray that women all over the world have access to this and can feel comfortable to go into these places because it's been such a gift for me yeah it's been yeah 
it's been about 10 years since I first offered my blood, which I'm extremely grateful for. But yeah, I feel like, can you imagine a world that we're living in with women that as soon as they get their moon, they're offering their blood back to the earth. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's a blessing that we have. And it's a responsibility and a privilege. Yes. So, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Yeah, and the teachings have really been lost. It's not something that we're taught when we're growing up. It's like we have to find these mystery teachings. And yeah, unfortunate. And also just the way you speak about the menstrual cycle and just like the the reverence and like the missing it. And like if only, you know, more women in the world could experience that. I know it's just been for so many something that's like dreaded and oh something that you don't want you know and um it I imagine that just you cultivating that relationship with the blood and connecting with the earth and really supported you you know for it to be a a loving experience and something I've noticed is I've started to work with it too it's like when I really give myself permission to slow down during the moon time, it's, it's amazing. It's like, you know, you receive all of these downloads and you just like really feel the world. And, um, and for those of us that are going into distractions and all the things, it's not as available and it can be really painful because I think our body is telling us, Hey, slow down. Hey, listen. And something I've actually thought about a few times with so many of us being at home. Mm -hmm. I wonder what it's like for the women that have always been having to go into work, like to have their moon right now (laughs) and to just actually get to experience like what it's like to be at home and to like have their comforts and, um, Mm -hmm. you know, one, one small little blessing maybe for some women that might be noticing that. I love that. Thanks for doing that, Joanna. Since I'm not bleeding, I think I just haven't tuned into that. <laughs> it's so real. Yeah, they're all at home. Wow, that's, that's beautiful. Mm. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to work on your moon. Yeah. Yeah. And was there a healing journey for you, like of just needing to work with and heal your own womb um, before offering that to other women? Yes. Yes, it's so beautiful, actually. There's a beautiful sister I was connecting with who's of our lineage, of the Rose lineage, who was actually asking me some questions the other day about, uh, about you know, my, my journey of conceiving. And actually, it really, for me, it actually all began with my menstrual cycle. And it was really early on for me. I used to go in and out of the hospital. I used to have a super heavy cycle. I had the worst relationship with my, my menstrual cycle in my teens. Um, I had acne, you name it. I had like the whole thing happening and it took me really deep into myself, like early, early, early on. And many people are always like, yeah, how do you, why are you so deep in this? And, you know, and, you know, you're not, you know, your age, you're young. And I'm just like, well, I think I just got forced so deeply into this process, you know, because of what was happening in my body. Um, yeah, I had, uh, I got diagnosed with, cervical cancer like second stage which was um in my it's, it's hereditary it's in my um, ancestral line and then i actually had a cyst on my ovaries in my early 20s and so i had a lot of stuff like teens early 20s and it sort of got to this point where it all just like really like peaked and i had a huge awakening around it when i was actually in greece and I first heard like a voice. I never really had ever heard a voice from the earth before that was like made sense to me. And I heard this voice just say, you know, drink your menstrual blood. I was like, what? Wow. I'm not going to do that. Um, and I, and it was really wild for me because at the time, you know, I, I really like, I think I was even still using tampons and it was just like a different reality, but I listened because I never heard anything that clear before. And it was really profound and like a huge moment for me where I was like, Ping. um, I actually got a menstrual cup soon after that and really went into a process and asked my body, like, how would that work? 
and I had a huge awakening and a huge connection to Native Americans. This was in America. Mm-hmm. And I went to America and I had a huge awakening with the land in America. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm still in America now, but I'm from Australia. <laughs> and I had like a almost like a Akashic record, like Rolodex kind of like flipped through and showed me a lot of what we've been through with the cycles and rhythms and why we were so disconnected. And she had then had this face. I had a like a Native American woman and a face and a really clear vision come to me and she explained a lot what was happening for me. And then I went into it. I went into a deep journey of cleansing and clearing my body, like through different like fasting and different um, protocols I was given. I laid on the earth for like 40 days straight. So I camped and like um, a lot of my guidance has told me multiple times that if you camp or stay close to the earth for 40 days, you can reset your rhythm of your womb. And so I went through a number of different initiations that I was just told to do because I had the space and I was traveling and I didn't have children at the time. And it was just the time for it. And I went really deep into it. Like it was like when I commit to something, I like I commit to it. (laughs) And yeah, it was, it was years of different work that seemed kind of wild and, abstract at the time for sure um and really it ended with me actually physically developing a cyst and then developing a connection to my my body in a way that i was able to hear what she needed i was told that it would have to be cut out because of the size of it and i was able to like shrink it down and completely um heal it from natural remedies like yoni steaming and um, pretty much everything that I you know speak about now, but yoni steaming, like de-armoring on the yoni, like breast massage, wound massage. I went into a, like a decade-long journey <laughs> after that piece into how and why and the reasons of why my ancestral line had carried that. And of course, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface with how you know these ancient ways have been. Yeah, really etched into our our DNA and our bones and our cycles, but they're just being you know rediscovered through our process. And so I definitely have a heroic her story journey and have been through so much. I was told I could never have children um, in when I was like nineteen, twenty, and I didn't think at the time I really wanted to have children. But yeah, it's been a big journey for me, and it's funny I've just been reflecting on that recently because. I don't speak about it much anymore. (laughs) I just speak about so many other things, but it's definitely the core of it. And it's definitely been a beautiful journey of like super deep surrender. And I've never really fit in anywhere. You know, I feel like that's the thing is too, as I felt most of my life, I was just trying to find a place where I fit. And then until I came to these wound teachings, I didn't, I stopped doing that because I was like, Oh, I'm already just home. I really fit here. Like, this is where I fit. Um, and yeah, it's been a blessing. And there's also been long journeys of celibacy and like huge amounts of studying and traveling. But I feel like more than ever, it was the grounding into a specific frequency, a land, which for me has been Kauai, has been Hawaii. Uh, it just, that's changed everything. This is my sixth year here in Kauai. And there's something about the custodians of this land and the like the, the natural natural like laws of what happens here when you decide to be here and commit to aligning with the energy that's here has really helped me um but i truly believe like wherever we are on the planet right now specifically in these times that's one of the most important things is to create a deep connection to the, the actual physical mana the earth the land that you're on and connecting with the custodians and more than anything is making offerings. You know, if it isn't your moon blood, it could be something else. You know, I think liquids are very powerful. So I feel like moon blood and um, Reacher juices from orgasms and all things like that are the most powerful things. But you could just start with some tobacco and sage. I feel like our earth mother is just calling for those offerings and and no better time than this sacred pause, you know, to come into right relation with the land that you're living upon that essentially, you know, is holding us in such exquisitely powerful times that we're like transforming and rebirthing a new 
world through her consciousness. Um, it's funny, you know, there's like a lot of things about 5G right now with what's mm-hmm. happening with the, the virus. And I truly believe that it's just a cover up for the 5D that's activating when you connect into the earth. Because I do feel, of course, like I'm in Kauai, but everywhere there is magic. You know, everywhere there is a little spot of nature. You can find it in cities. I've you know, find it. And that's just what, for me, more than anything, I feel like has helped. Like, is, is that, okay, I'm home in my body, but okay, like, how am I actually cultivating a relationship with where I'm calling home, where I'm showing up in my offerings and all sorts of things. You know, there's many different things that I do. And I work with clients one-on-one to really help with that because I do feel like coming from Australia, living in a country that I wasn't born in has also given me such a great gift around you know because for years i was like i just want to go home but i'm here now and it's it was created this very interesting vortex uh but now like just really arriving and receiving the gifts from where you are it does come with that level of appreciation of of the custodians and the ancestry but that's why i feel i was able to get to this point you know more than anything was through coming into right relation with my blood. Trust me, there's many, many years that I was like, you know, definitely going through a process of not being able to be in that relation. It was like, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mirror, you know? It's like when we, a lot of times in the world right now, like, okay, you've got a cyst on your ovary, let's cut it out. Okay, this happened, like, let's cut this off. Like, it's, <laughs> that's not how this works, you know? It's like really going into that and so, Truly, yeah, it's definitely, it's been like close to 15 years now of this journey, I would say, that I've been on. Um, yeah. yeah, this is like 15th year. <laughs> yeah, it's been a beautiful awakening process into these divine feminine mysteries for sure. Yes. You know what you shared about 5D? I feel it too. And it's just like, there's, I feel like right now is the most important time to be keeping up our spiritual practices. And like, I really committed, my partner and I committed to waking up early and meditating. And it's just like, there is something happening on the planet right now. And if we can be, um, you know, aligned with just really like seeing the beauty of of it and seeing like feeling the transmissions that are coming through, not getting too taken into the news and everything that's being fed to us, but just like finding your own center and starting with just a simple meditation practice. It's I feel like super important right now. And a lot of us are shifting into these new dimensions, Mm -hmm. new realities. I agree with you a (laughs) hundred (laughs) percent. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm giggling because like, it's like, you know, they're being a mom and being pregnant and all that's happening in my life. It's like, when I do get to those places, I'm just like, whoa, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's things to people who don't have children. I'm like, what are you even doing with your time? Like, <laughs> I'm like, if I had that more time, I'd be doing this and this, but no, I totally agree. It can be super simple too. It can be like just even a five minutes. And it's a stream of consciousness that it's really readily available for sure. Like everything is slowing down. You know, if one of my dear yeah. sisters here was just saying how it's like the divine mother or whoever you can reference. or so however you feel about our earth, our earth mother, the planet, you know, he or she, it's like they just put us in a timeout for a moment to like sort out what's going on. And it's like, will you use this time wisely or will, you know, will you make the necessary changes in your life to be able to utilize this or will you not? And that's the consciousness shift too. It's like, there's so much focus right now. And people around me, I'm just like, whoa, like with this conspiracy theories and fear and all these things being fed to us. But it's like really this truest connection we have right now is to source, is through Sophia, is through the earth, it's through even if you just want to imagine it, like, you know, you did at the beginning of the call, it's like, it just changes everything, even for a split second, because it's a, it's a sourcing, you know, it's like, it's from the source point of origin, which is who we are, you know, it's like, that's why the blood and these teachings and 
the whole Rose lineage is just so special because we get to go to like the core of the origin point of where this is from and we return home. Um, you know, if we're returning home daily, then we're not going to be afraid of half the stuff that we're afraid of right now because we're returning home. Yeah. And no one else can really take that away from us. No news or a virus or a story can really take that away from us. Yes. Yeah, what is the rose lineage in your words, in your own words? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, oh I know, there's so many words, but there's also just like, ah. Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, truly. It just, oh, yeah, I mean, all of those joyful, divine, yummy sensations and feelings is what the rose lineage is to me. And truly, like, it's a legacy of love, you know, it's like, to be met and to meet others and to share with others from that place of those potent codes that are so intricately woven into everybody, I truly believe, um, are just like a blessing, you know, for me, it's like, I mean, of course, if you want to compare that to a personal reference in your own life, just go smell a real rose that has thorns on it that, you know, hasn't been gosh, hasn't been altered or changed or shifted or frozen in time, you know, just like a real rose is truly like such a blessing. It's a gift. And that it's just like, it's a pause. It's a moment in time. It's a still point. I always say it's a still point of immaculate conception, you know, like the rose lineage and these teachings and Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, Isis, you know, Inanna, whoever you ever want to connect to, they, they encapsulize this essence of beauty you know, through the way that they lived, through the way that they are. And for me, it's a, it's a beauty way. It's a walking, it's, it's a commitment, you know. It's like we're so focused in this world on things that are beautiful, on perfection, but the full spectrum of the rose lineage and what that is, is the thorns as well. You know, it's like, it's the shadows, it's the boundaries, it's like holding true to really what it is that you want to birth forth in your life and also what you will and will not, will not hold space for, which is kind of what I feel like is happening right now. Yeah. Like I was talking to a client of mine this morning and she was sharing how it's not mandatory where she is right now to wear face masks, but in a Kauai, it's like, it's illegal to enter a store without having a face mask on. And I wasn't aware that that's actually not happening everywhere. And I'm sharing that right now because I just was like, I went to town for the first time uh, yesterday to go see my midwife and to get some blood work done. And I was just like, the nose was covered, the mouth was covered. And I was like, how would it, my first thought was like, how would I even smell a rose like this? <laughs> that was one of my first thoughts where I was like, how would I, and I just had this whole process around like, you know, like that, just, just that how would I smell a rose? Mm. And, you know, just, yeah, the rose is it's all encompassing, you know, really, truly her teachings have been, I mean, the way that I see it and the way that I can understand it for me um, is that, you know, I grew up, my, my grandmother is so precious. She's not, she's not a hundred percent here in this reality with, you know, she's very tuned in, you know, she hasn't left her house. Um, she's very tuned into the news and she's pretty fear based, but her garden that I grew up in, she has the best roses. And I remember she used to win the rose garden of the year every year when I was growing up. And I just remember just the regal, royal, sweet, like essence of the divine feminine just oozed from her because she worked with these teachers um i grew up with her and wasn't ever as close to her as i hoped but my mom also grew roses and now i'm about to put my rose bushes in the ground and yeah i, I definitely feel like it's a it's a legacy of love you know it's like when all else fails and what and what has failed and what's not working in our planet it, we do come back to this point of beauty and that is all encompassing. That is a whole cycle of the rose. That is the seeding. That is the budding. That is the patiently awaiting the blossom and the blooming. And that is also honoring their death process too and allowing the last petals to fall. Um, yeah, I'll never forget my grandmother, you know, like just the way she carried herself. 
like no other woman in my family, I would always just be like, wow, like she's just so royal and like legal. Mm. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I, I admire that and I admire the that magic. That is a full embodiment of, of beauty. Yeah. Mm. She has other sides too. <laughs> and so does my mom and so do I. <laughs> but it's like, mm. all encompassing, you know? And it's like, I think in the world, like, I mean, even think about it right now. Like, most roses you buy from a store, they don't have thorns on them. You know, even yeah. all this, there's a company right now, Venus, it's a flower or flower that has the, those roses that they have sealed that last for like years, which makes me sad. Mm. And it's like, you know, we've hybrid out the real magic of roses, which is the thorns and the rose. Yeah. The beauty of um, the not ever lasting forever, you know? Yeah. And I look at my grandmother and just the way that she's aged and she's so beautiful. And it's just like, you know, the, people, the women that work with roses, whether it's consciously or unconsciously, they just, I just notice that they get, they get it. They yeah. get the process of, of the, the beauty of the wisdom, the aging, and you know, I honor that. And every woman in my life that carries these teachings in a conscious way has changed my life. So there's, there's really, yeah, I just, I am in awe of the beauty and the magic and the deep levels of transformation that come through women who carry this lineage specifically if they are conscious to it but of course if they're unconscious too you can see the magic of what they're weaving maybe they're not even aware of it it's you know it's up to us youngins us <laughs> younger generation to reflect that to them for all the reasons they're carrying back and forth yes. yeah my grandmother is such a sweetheart yeah my grandmother my mom bless their souls mm. <laughs> they're still growing roses yeah yeah, I'd say that for me, I only started really intentionally working with roses, plants, gardening, like in the last year or two. And particularly right now, this month, I was talking with a friend about um, about roses and the symbology and how, you know, each part of the rose represents a different part of our life and to like the falling, the rebirth, the dying and um, that day I was going out onto the property because I know there are a few rose bushes here. It's a big property where I live in Sonoma County and was connecting with them. And um, I discovered, I knew there were some flowers at the entrance of the property growing really high up in an oak tree. And I hadn't really examined them, but I went up to see and discovered like way, way, way up high, like this vine had climbed so high in this oak tree. They were these delicate pink roses. And I followed it down to the root. And I had never seen this before. I've lived on this property for six years and either they weren't blooming or I wasn't ready yet to receive their wisdom, but two enormous rose bushes on either side of the entrance of the property mm. and like the stock of it huge just like and I started asking my neighbor who's been here for a long time like did our landlord plant these roses he's had the property for 50 years and she said uh, no those were here much longer and it's just like to think these rose bushes who knows how old they are 60 70 80 years and just like their wisdom and like feeling that synchronicity of that moment was just like <laughs> like okay and <laughs> being initiated and just like now really like honoring the rose so much deeper and I'm so excited to offer my blood to them now and just to start to really commune and see what relationship develops just from being with them and it's interesting too because like it felt it feels good to share it here but it was one of those things that felt so sacred like I didn't go share about it on social media it was just like one of those things that you just like want to keep close to your heart and it's yeah there's so much unfolding happening and part of the reason I think that I found them was because I'm spending more time outside, because I have more time, because of the slowing down, because of just like everything we're going through right now and being able to 
really watch spring blossom has been so beautiful. There's so much we can learn. Yeah, I I love what you just shared. It's it's, it's beautiful because without you even knowing, you just live somewhere that the roses are your gatekeepers. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's the thing is too like with the rose lineage there's so much synchronicities like it's like mm. it's so beautiful it's like this slow beautiful like gentle like delicate like softening into the self and of course be careful because the thorns there too you know what i mean like yeah. it's like it's just this it's you know I, i'll never forget when i um first like started really working with the roses because I craved doing it with no gloves and just like getting the thorns in my fingers. I craved it. It like mm. helped me. Mm. It helped me align with uh, things that I was forgetting. It was almost like an acupressure in my fingers and my hands. And um, many of us know that you know, our hands are very connected to Mary Magdalene and our service. And I used to find that one of the best ways for me to move out of my ego and stories and whatever was happening for me was just to go and like be with the roses and not specifically these roses because I've been with them for like three years, but I have a teacher that has like a hundred rose bushes on Kauai and yeah, it was magical. And she would always be like, you know, wear gloves and she would always have gloves. And I'm like, I just don't want to, like I want to just be pricked by all these thorns um, it was something really like powerful within that and it used to spend I spent days healing them so I'd have like this journey for days where I'd be like oh wow like, um, yeah they're just so ancient and I love that because I recently was in Maui um, seeing a dear sister who has a beautiful Venus temple over there Denny I love you and yeah it was really beautiful there's a farm in, and they have like a hundred year old rose bush and like, you know, it's, he, he's been with it, like his family's been with it and he has the most exquisite roses. And I just have never seen anything so big in my life. You know, it kind of sounds yeah. like what you're talking about where I was just like, I didn't even know these, these got this big or yeah. they had roots and like, and just that they were that, like, you know, they're, they're so ancient and. I also just love what you said because I, I feel that too, you know, with my journey with the rose, it's like, it's helped me like take everything back inside, you know, like it's helped yeah. me claim what is sacred just for me and not to share with anybody anymore or even my partner. It's helped me reclaim like these parts of myself where they're just for me, you know, mm. and I feel like the rose is a protectress of pure beauty you know we have the thorns that protect the essence of beauty which you know as we know in these times the beauty of the divine feminine has been it's been disrespected and pillaged and raped and you know we've become disconnected from it and the rose really is is a deep teacher about supporting you to come back into communion in in a beautiful way that's for you you know, that it's a way that you can receive it. It's a gentle connection. And I mean, many of us who are attracted to the rose lineage either come from backgrounds of you know, huge amounts of trauma or sexual trauma, or, you know, it's in our line and we may not have experienced it, but we've felt it in a sense of some formality of our line. And I feel that rose medicine is like, I mean, I personally feel like if the world needs rose medicine right now, <laughs> it's like the whole world needs rose medicine. Um, but essentially, women that find their way home to this, I feel like it's, gosh, it's it's so sweet and bitter at the same time and, a, and the perfect amount and the perfect dose of those two things together, you know, the sweetness and the bitterness and the light and the shadow. And yeah, I just, I'm in awe when I'm around, specifically, obviously, bushes that old too when I was around this hundred year old bush I was just like I couldn't even speak properly (laughs) I just was like just so in awe of like the ancient teachings that it was just pouring forth from just standing next to it and you know it's like this is where we connect with Mary Magdalene so we connect with Mother Mary with Lady Axis with all of our beautiful Rose Lineage guides this is really like the, the point um a lot of times when I work with women one-on-one, 
I speak a lot about the rose roots, like for the first, <laughs> for the first, the first um, couple of times I connected with them, I, I really, I asked them to work really deeply with their rose roots and like how they connect to rooting themselves in, in the aspects of rooting in with their rose roots because it's very different to just connecting to the earth, you know? And then when you offer your moon blend to it, it's like a whole other piece and a whole other magic. It's interesting, I still have a, a piece of my son's placenta. I actually kept it in the fridge. I, I wanted to take it home to Australia and bury it because I haven't been home since I became a mother. But it just seems like that's not happening. And I got a huge download the other day that it was to be buried in the middle of the rose garden that I'm planting. Mm. And so that felt really special because he's so connected to the roses too. But um, yeah, I just, it just, it's a great returning home. You know? And really, I, I mean, I can only speak for myself, but in these times, you know, that's all I really you know, have been longing for is like just to return home and to, to be with that level of depth of receptivity to arriving home while simultaneously being welcomed at the same time. You know, I feel like many of us, many of us are in this lineage too, and many of us are in the spiritual path. We've kind of struggled with fitting in or feeling at home or like finding a place on this earth or trying to get a nine to five job or doing any of these things that are so to speak normal. But, you know, I most feel at home sitting with the roses. Yeah. I most feel at home sitting in the roses. <laughs> That's when I find my most happiest places next to the roses. Those are the roses. Mm. Thank you for sharing all of that. Yeah. Gosh, I, there's so much I want to talk to you about. <laughs> I feel like I'm just going to ask a couple more questions, but um, what is the Trinity of the Holy Grail? Yeah, beautiful. Yay. Yeah, so, ooh, so expensive. So <laughs> for me, I had, a, I had a really insanely beautiful journey here on Kauai when I first got the uh, – I ask for a lot of permission here on this island because I've done a lot of things that have left me with an interesting aspect of relating to this island. It's almost like <laughs> if I was to really share with you, like I've been almost summoned to this island and not allowed to leave. That's what it feels like sometimes. Mm. Um, and that's a blessing because people who have been here and know that like this island and mainly all of Hawaii, all the Hawaiian islands, they love you and they want you to stay or they want you to leave. And they're very clear about what they want you to do. And so I had the honor of co-facilitating a Sisterhood of the Rose retreat with my beautiful, beloved sister, Leola and Tata. And after we anchored that energy here in Kauai, I obviously live here and she went back to Australia. But we did a really powerful journey of seeding, um, so to speak, um, our placenta to the earth in Kauai. So it's a, tradi- it's a tradition that the Aboriginals did for a long time. And we had a surrogate placenta because obviously my placenta was a long time ago and so was hers. But she guided me through a very powerful ritual where I had a surrogate, like I chose a stone. And it's it's very normal in um, in Australia. People do this to, to heal and their connection to the earth. Um, it's a very ancient Aboriginal tradition. And so she guided me through this. She's an amazing woman, Layola. And I had a surrogate stone. I slept with it, just like did everything with it. Like it was like a lotus birth where it was like connected to me. And then I, I offered it to the earth and I did a big ceremony and had a really powerful, powerful journey. And after that, it had a lot of transmissions just keep coming through that were like for weeks, months. And I wrote it all down. And one of the main things that came through was how we are moving into a Trinity based consciousness where we are connected to ourselves, Holy Spirit, the earth, like there's a, there's a trinity of consciousness that's happening. You know, you, if you want to relate that to masculine, feminine, you can, or, or spirit and earth, whatever feels most aligned, but we're essentially like, we're a part of a trinity-based consciousness that's allowing us to return home to ourselves. And so then within the lens of the Rose lineage, I had Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, and Lady Isis come to me and share with me specific codes. So the white rose with Mary Magdalene, the heart. 
signifying um, that deep level of peace and harmony and that returning of like the realigning of like the dove of the heart. And Mary came to me, Mary Magdalene, and also explained that Yasha was there with her. And that's where they you know, were communing in this, this frequency and the moment where we're really needing to come back into the purity of the heart and to really forgive, like the, the white rose is a symbol of peace from my, my experience and my understanding. And she also explained to me that uh, Mary explained to her energies in the womb, but Mother Mary's holding that space as the Divine Mother and she's rebirthing consciousness from the still point of immaculate conception of conceiving our new reality through the body. And so, of course, that was like, whoa, I had to unpack that and I've been writing a book for five years about it. But the reality is, is that then Mother Mary came to me and gave me the red rose codes in the womb and then we had Lady Isis in the Yoni with the pink rose codes. And so I'll unpack the red rose codes was more about obviously the womb, but the consciousness of creating. You know, the reality is, is when we come into alignment and any woman on here who's had a son, they know it's like, it's like a lover son relation, like a lover mother son relationship. It's very powerful. I never imagined like, the level of connection I would have with my son in a way that became like almost like this lover mother phase, you know, it was really powerful. And I imagine that Yeshua and mother Mary had that too. And that it was a really deep, powerful Trinity based alignment with Mary Magdalene, mother Mary and Yeshua. And the red rose codes obviously have the blood mixed within them as well. And the DNA and the coding I won't go too far into it, but that's the second uh, code. And then the third, so this being the Trinity, one, two, three, when you mix the white and the red rose together, it creates a pink rose. And so at the seat of our throne, um, at the root of our bodies, um, Lady Isis is protecting that space as a deep, powerful, present protectress of the teachings of the Venusian rose. And really coming back to that point of healing premature penetration from my understanding is what that's about so coming out of like the penetrating mind of how can i receive get how can i just roll that back and just appreciate you know what this gateway has in store and has either birthed or created or given death to and so essentially these codes came through and like i said that i'm writing a book about it so it's hard to kind of crystallize but these codes were the trinity of the Holy Grail. They were the trinity codes of how we can step into a way of no longer living from the frequencies of the mind, but living from the embodiment of our of our being. And it's always evolving, yeah? And so the practices came through, and this is what I'm writing about. It's actually a manuscript. There's teachings for the uh, heart and the breasts, for the womb, and really working with the level of creation and life force and also death. And then there was a whole practice and sequence that came through for the Yoni, which was called the Codes of the Rose Ankh. And so this is also a process of descending. There's also more teachers in our line of our lineage, which you know traces very far back. But um, yeah, essentially the Trinity of the Holy Grail is a consciousness. It's coming back into the body. It's living from the body. It's evolving from the body. It's really allowing us to connect the codes that we carry already innately they're already in our body you can't forget them <laughs> they're already here it's a, just a remembrance and a reflection and of course you know it's a reclamation too of you know reclaiming your holy child of mother father god you know it's a, it's it's a consciousness of creation and so for me it's come into many formats we created a retreat um, a five-day retreat based upon that to help women move through these layers and then I recently just put the format into a five-week online immersion to support women too because, one, because of the times we're in, and two, um, I was already training other women in this format. But essentially, it's uh, really about your body. It's about healing your body. It's about healing your connection that you have to the earth and to the stars and remembering that you have a holy mother, you have a holy father, and you are that trinity point of how they commune and it actually all happens in the body. It doesn't happen in here. It doesn't happen in your mind. It can't actually conceptualize in here. And that's why a lot of us right now are struggling because we can't make sense of what's happening. But if we come into our body, we can really 
embody a trinity based consciousness and find more peace Mm -hmm. and so it's also been a personal journey of mine you know i have a lot of um processes with you know being too much in my head and so these teachings have helped me scrounge it all down and there are practices that i do often um try to daily it's doing my best right now with these children home <laughs> um but yeah they're essentially like a, a body of teachings um really beautiful too because they're interchangeable and you can weave them and they're they're really available to many of us who are already doing this work because of course if we're already doing work like this we get it so easily and of course if we're not doing any work like this there is a way that we can receive it because it's not our mind it's just our body and our body just goes oh yeah right i remember this because this is like what would happen in in the priest if when we were together in the temples this is what we did these are the templates these are the activations this is the way we worked we didn't speak we didn't have these processes we didn't have these confusions we had complete you know symbiotic you know, ceremonial relationships with each other's bodies and um, of course too it was done in trinity pods so back in the temples i truly believe there was always three women in a pod working together on these teachings and you know one woman would lay down one woman would be at her crown and her breasts other woman would be at her womb and her yoni and we would you know perform these this ceremony for that woman And so this is also what I do in my sessions one on one. I've trained it's about 12 women I've trained now that assist me because I like to do it in threes of course. But this is essentially the base core of everything I've been doing and mm-hmm. what I've created and really what I'm writing about and really is what I long for that we can all just come to a temple once a week and just do these teachings um and make it our own, you know, because I know there's so much more to it. You know, I know and since I've been joining forces with so many amazing women and we've been working together in these templates we just see how there's so many places to go you know there's it's endless because we're all so unique and we all have this beautiful um you know symphony that we're learning how to again align and sing this sophianic song of the stars through the vessels of our body you know it doesn't just come through the voice it's like it's it's a whole body you know prayer offering ceremony so yeah that's there's so many more things i could say um but the book's hopefully going to be out in 20, 2022 um yeah it's taking a beautiful amount of devotion and patience and presence and i have released the manuscript to a people i've trained but i hope to launch it to the world in 2022 amazing yes yeah. yes <laughs> Um and do you want to share just about um I know you were offering that 5 week online the trinity it will, will that still be available where can people find that Yeah so we are uh, right now we're going live for that on the new moon and we are doing that it's I was going to be a self paced like you know journey for people to go through whenever they wanted to just to be available but just because what's happening right now in the world I felt really called to create a live journey of it so that we can really journey through it together it's also the first 5 weeks of um another online offering that I offer but really the energies that we're in right now is so perfect because the 5 weeks it's it is self paced but we're going to move through week by week together and we're going to um spend you know time doing other things as well but within that are these teachings is these three pillars of what i just spoke about um it's really exciting because we have we have so many beautiful sisters already signed up and it just feels like it's so alive and juicy already because we are you know doing it live together and we also have some really beautiful elders coming on and it just it's really beautiful because what we focus on we create right it's like when i went in town yesterday i was like you know what everyone just needs some more self care time and <laughs> and to be doing these practices and to be in their bodies and reminding themselves that they're safe they're already home and so yeah that begins in the new moon and it's yeah i'm really excited about it because the last thing i'm doing probably till next year because then i'm having a baby and i'm going to take some, some time off and just going to finish writing and It's the last live thing I'll be doing for this year and I know what is in store next year so I'm just like this is this is like a final hurrah for me for now before I go into yes. my little womb cave 
which feels really special too because, um, you know, it's always a blessing to be journeying with women live and creating a vortex of transformation and co-creation. Gosh, it, the things we can do together just blows my mind. Like it, I even we did a um, we did a an offering to just begin speaking about this and just the prayers and the collective feel that when we come together, it's like we can just create new realities of pleasure and joy and presence and connection. And really like if there's anything that this offering is about for me doing it live is, is really to support women to be able to tone down all the sounds that are around them and really just come inside to themselves you know, and find what is in there, what is their holy grail, what do they want to do, what lights them up, how do you want to create from this space, that's really what's important right now. We're literally creating a new earth where there is not going to be any more slavery of things you don't have to do. Of course, it's going to be responsibilities, you're going to have work to do on yourself, but we don't have to do all those things outside of ourselves anymore that aren't nourishing us. So yeah, it feels like we're creating a new way of being and returning to the divine feminine the way that she's been longing for us to return to her bosom. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I have one more question, which is just I wonder if there's anything you want to share around your journey um, with your first child or this child around conception. And I just, I feel like I know a lot of women right now who are on that journey and if there's anything you want to speak to just around um, your experience or guiding guidance you might have or wisdom you want to share to a woman who is on that journey and longing to bring in a soul. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect question. Um, yeah, you know, it's, I just feel like there there is this this piece of perfectionism in the world that I personally was holding on to for a long time and still feel like, you know, it's something that trips me up a lot, is wanting things to be perfect and, like, exactly the way that you want them to be. And I feel like becoming a mother, it's really shown me that this is the deepest level of surrender you will ever, ever go on, you know, because even if when you conceive then you're still creating this life and there's still the birth and there's the potentiality of the death. It's just such a deep surrender. And I feel that the divine feminine, the divine mother and all these ways in which we're being told we should be in this reality, like how we should be a woman, how we should show up. Everything just falls away in those moments of conceiving, like you're conceptualizing a new version of yourself. You know, you don't, you don't just become a mother. You, you literally shape shift and become a new woman and I held on to a lot of old constructs and confines and, and versions of myself and I just feel like the easiest way in which we can conceptualize what it is that we want to create is through also being more connected to death um, I say that specifically because in these times too many people are struggling with that and I just feel like the more consciously connected you can be to your womb the more consciously connected you can be to the process of life, death, and rebirth, the better off you will be. And just the perfectionism, you know, it's like, wow, you know, like, I feel like you'll never be 110% ready to be the mother you want to be because you're not supposed to be that mother that you want to be. You're just going to be the mother that you're destined to be, that the divine mother wants you to be, that, you know, we're an emanation of her essence. Um, it doesn't always look one way and um, yeah just a lot of deep letting go and like super deep connection to yeah what it is that you want to create and what it is that you want to bring in I definitely feel that it's really important for people to yeah have a level of connection to the sovereignty of the self and that's one thing that I found the biggest thing I feel like I've shifted since my son to being pregnant now is that I'm really committed to sovereignty in a way because you're, you know, you, you, you get taken over. <laughs> Someone else is growing in you. Um, one of my dear sisters who's just had her third baby was like, you know, when you're pregnant, you just become that being. Like you're not even yourself. And then one of my dear beloved um, amazing elders, um, 
probably if you don't know her, please look her up. Anna, Annabelle de Boulay. So she has an amazing offering. Um, she has the Glastonbury Rose Chapel over in Avalon. And she was sharing with me and sharing on one of her posts and we were talking about at one time how it does take you about three years to get yourself back after you have a baby. And because there's like a process of, and I was like, yeah, the Trinity, um, you know, you really are passing yourself over. This is the highest level of service you can ever go through in an embodied form of like the physical body. Um, it takes great levels of sovereignty and selflessness and self-love and spatial awareness around just knowing that you are connected to Sophia no matter what. <laughs> but I just feel like it's really funny because I literally like, and my son turned three and then I got pregnant. <laughs> I think I got pregnant like that weekend. So I was like, oh, um, but yeah, you know, I also spent, I spent a good year before I got pregnant actually celibate. And so with my partner, I, I just had this whole process where I felt um, her I felt uh, another being and I was really guided and many psychics were like, you're going to have a girl or you're going to be pregnant soon. And I was like, okay. And I just feel like the level of sovereignty that I anchored into was like nothing I ever did before I had my first child because I now knew like what was coming, the level of what I was giving over, you know, from the fact, from growing, you know, um, from feeling this expansion and then feeling this contraction, you know, because when after you give birth, you, you're like, you feel empty. You're like, it's very, it's a very huge process to be like, now this thing's outside of me. And it's very, um, it's very mystical and magical, but it's very, very powerful you know, way in which to, to lose yourself and to recreate yourself. So if anything I would share was just to be really connected to your sovereignty and connected to your path, connected to Sophia, and know that it's never going to be perfect, that you are perfect the way that you're doing it. Everything's perfect. You know, that's the biggest thing I think is like, I witnessed so many, even myself, you know, through this process, I was like, you know, you want everything to be perfect. You like want this whole pregnancy to be perfect. And I've had so many processes lately around like, why is this virus happening when I'm pregnant? But it's like, everything's perfect. Otherwise they would have chose to come into your womb and be here now with you for the planet and you're, you're a conduit, you're the vessel, you know, and that's really the ultimate surrendering into that, which I feel like is what most of us have just been praying for most of our lives is to yeah. take over and to be fully surrendered to the divine mother. <laughs> so yeah, it's a blessing. Um, it's, it's beautiful and everything it's everything in one it's such a wild beautiful ride yeah i'm actually um i'm actually really excited for it for this like for this next birth because after having one you kind of feel like there's that piece of gone that, that piece is going around like oh my gosh i just don't know what's gonna happen because you still don't know what's gonna happen but there's just so much more magic that you're like whoa like i'm there's so much magic there that I just feel like I couldn't have possibly explored the first time around because I wasn't sure it was going to happen. But now it's like yeah. going into this and just, there is so much magic. I'll never forget the moment where I literally was in my last hour of labor and one of my dear sisters whispered something into my ear about my ancestors. And I never forget like what happened. I just, everything stopped and I went so deep down into the earth and to like retrieve like a, this being and then I went so far up into the sky to retrieve other parts of the soul and then I went so deep down into myself and then you know it gave birth I'll never forget that because you know it was like the ultimate embodied meditation <laughs> wow. of what, of what we do on this planet you know it's like a retrieval it was like a soul retrieval for sure for myself and for, for him yeah it's really magical it's really special wow Oh, this, I love hearing, yeah, just these stories and everything coming through. I wonder if you have any, just any closing words for the sisters listening, and then I'll just guide us in a short prayer to, to close for today. I feel like in these times, just listen to yourself, trust, go within, you, know, you carry the holy grail within your womb. Heart, you have the sacred elixir of life that is to 
it leads to immortality. You know, we don't have to look anywhere outside ourselves. We have everything within our body. Yes. Yeah. Let's just take that in for a moment. Breathe it in, breathe it down to the womb and to the root, and let it out. Mm. Just taking any gems into your heart from today, anything that wants to be explored, anything that wants to just be sacred within your being. Feeling the wisdom and the power of the rose, the lineage of women who came before us, connection to our blood and to our womb. It's holding it all in our bodies in these cycles of life, death, rebirth. I just bring my hands to my heart, just thanking you, Shona, for being with us today and sharing everything that you shared. Really, really grateful. And to everyone listening, just thanking you for being here and showing up and being part of this community. Lots of gratitude. Blessings. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen to this episode. If you liked it, share it with a friend or leave us a review on iTunes. You can also follow along on Instagram at Rising Woman Leaders sign up for email updates at risingwomanleaders.com to be sure to receive all the new and inspiring content. Thanks again for being here. It's an honor to walk this path with you.